The trial of William Samoy Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang continued from 6th to 8th November with the testimony of the 7th prosecution witness under the pseudonym P0423. The witness testified under the protective measures of facial pixelation and voice distortion. The majority of the testimony was given in private sessions, closed to the public so the witness's identity could remain confidential. The hearings took place in the presence of parties and participants, as well as Mr. Sang. The judges decided to excuse Mr. Ruto from attending the hearings this week so that he could perform a number of state duties, including attending meetings at the international level and being present in Kenya while the president is out of the country. In response to questions posed by Office of the Prosecutor Trial Lawyer Lara Renton, witness P0423 said that the Amumbi area in the Greater Eldoret area was mostly populated by Kikuyus in 2007. Before the elections, he said, rumors started that Kikuyus were going to be driven out. He further stated that someone showed him bows and arrows and told him that these weapons were being assembled by Kalenjin youth just a few days before the elections. He did not attend any rallies or political meetings, but he heard from others that Kikuyus were being referred to with derogatory terms and were considered as foreigners who should go back home. Violence in Yamumbi started after the announcements of the election results, the witness father explained. Houses belonging to Kikuyus were burned by Nandis, and some of the residents who were trying to put out the fires were killed. Please tell us what happened to person number 10. So he came with the policemen to his house. We actually saw the police vehicle and followed the event to find out what was happening. When that person got to his house with the policemen, the attackers were already there, and this happened during the day. He was uh, cut in the presence of the policemen and taken away by a driver in a very poor state. He had been cut into pieces and his intestines were spewing out. He was disemboweled and in an unrecognizable state. By the time the driver got him to the hospital, it was too late. He could not be saved. He died. Number Tisa Pia Aliwawa. Number nine on the list was also killed. How was person number nine killed? When the assailants arrived, he attempted to flee. People were jumping over the barbed wire and attempted to flee in order to make their way towards Langas or that area. What was the ethnicity of person number nine? So he was a Kikuyu. You've told us that he attempted to flee from the assailants. What happened to him? How was he killed? He was in the company of other individuals. His clothing became entangled in the barbed wire, and the attackers then caught hold of him. That was during the day. He was then cut into pieces and died instantly. Was anyone else killed or injured that you know of? Yes. Number 11 on the list. What happened to number 11? Number 11 on the list also attempted to flee, but they caught up with him. Who are you referring to when you say they caught up with him? I am referring to the attackers. What happened when they caught up with him? They cut him into pieces and threw his remains into a bag. What happened after that? They then called us and told us to come and pick up our body. They said, come and pick up your corpse.
Most of the people who lost their houses slept in the forest and went to churches or police stations during the day. During the four days of violence, the witness said about 300 houses were burnt. During the defense's cross-examination, the majority of which was conducted in private sessions, William Ruto's defense counsel, Essa Fall, asked the witness about the violence in the neighboring areas before the announcement of the results. The witness said that he was not aware that there had been fighting between Kikuyus and Luos in Langas, nor that Kikuyus had chased away Luos and Luyas in Huruma, as suggested by the defense counsel. Mr. Witness, the question is, did you take any steps to remove yourself and your family from Langas, from Yamumbi? Uh, it's a question of a yes or a no. Apana. No. Are you surprised to note that the medical record for person number 10 does not support your testimony? There is nothing in it suggesting that he was disemboweled. Please kindly repeat your question so that I may understand it. Are you surprised to note that the death certificate of person number 10 does not show that he was disemboweled? Counsel, instead of asking witnesses whether they will be surprised to know, why don't you simply put your proposition in concrete terms to the witness? Uh, I would uh, proceed as guided, Mr. President. Are you surprised to note, Mr. Witness, that person number 10 <coughs> died of cardiorespiratory arrest due to shock and head injury due to multiple cuts? I'm so that, 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 hold on. I'm thinking about this question. We have to be fair to the witness. Cardiovascular arrest, multiple cuts. To the head. To the head. Doesn't that require a medical expert to exclude other possibilities? Uh, Mr. President, uh, the defense still maintains its previous submissions that uh, if the person had been disemboweled, this is definitely something that would ordinarily appear on the, on the certificate. But we leave the point and move on. Uh, all we want to demonstrate is that there is nothing to support the statement of the witness that person number 10 was indeed disemboweled. So I'll move on and leave that point. Mr. Sang's defense team did not cross-examine this witness. The next trial hearing is scheduled for Thursday, 21st November, 2013. The Rome Statute states that the court shall take appropriate measures to protect the safety, physical and psychological well-being, dignity and privacy of witnesses if they would be at risk on account of giving their testimony. It is important to note that the court can only provide its protection services in relation to threats which are directly connected to the witness involvement with the court. Procedures have been established whereby a party to the proceedings, such as the defence or the prosecution or the legal representative of victims, can consult with the registry to request protective measures.